Hey, it's Joey Baladonna here from Anthrax, and this is Sagas. Uh. Oh. Oh. Look, this is a big one. I didn't break out and join the podcast today. It is now time for Devil's Advocate. <laughs> same time, same place, for something. What's going on, everybody? This is Corbin, the Serpent Tongue Skip With. This is Rand, the Berserker Marabu, and this is... Sagas. You're a very special episode of Sagas. Yes, because today. we have special guests with us, Michael Dell from the band Artillery. How are you going today? Well, hello, everybody. I'm doing great, so nice to be here. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely our pleasure. Um, I'm so glad we were able to hook this up, and um, it's going to be an exciting episode for sure. Cool. Yeah, look, very much looking forward to it, you know, here from the frosty north of uh, Denmark. <laughs> so. Nice. Um, so we're going to be talking about the your guys' latest album, and which is X. And yeah, so we, we'll just be asking questions about that, if it's okay with you. Yeah, that's... Of course. Nice. Oh, that's yeah. nice. <laughs> I, got it right, I got it right here, you know, so yeah. Nice. Uh, um, right. All right. So first question, uh, Ren, do you want to start things off? Yeah, sure. I mean, I mean, first of all, congratulations on such an incredible album, and thanks so much for joining us today. It's an honor chatting to you. Um, you know, the the whole process behind an album. There's a, everybody has a different uh, kind of approach, and I was just wondering if you could tell us just straight off the bat, how was it making the album? And uh, obviously, condolences. It was uh, the first album without Morton which was very sad um, loss for your band, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, could you tell us about, there was like demo tracks behind the, the making of this. Could you tell us more about the process? Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, as you said, uh, first of all, it was the first time that we, uh, we had to do an album without Morton. And that obviously, of course, made a change. And it made us, uh, you know, they realized that we have to, uh, to to maybe remember some of this, the stuff that he would put into the process as well, because Morton would very much be in the studio and then go, you know do all this correcting things and small notches and stuff like that, and then try this and try that and so on. And so, but this time around, obviously, of course, he was there in spirit, but not in in the flesh, and that's um, that was a huge difference. I don't think that. Uh, Overall, the, the, the process was so different uh, for me. Uh, of course, he wasn't there, but, um, but the other ways of doing things, we kind of stuck to the formula. The formula. Uh, and that is that the, the other guys go in and they, they crank out the tunes and then I'll you know, crawl into the studio last in line and then I'll try to you know, put my touch to it. But I think this time around, we, uh, I, I mean, we were trying, I mean, the new guitarist, Kane, was uh, putting on some tunes in there. And I also tried out some some different approaches re in regards of lyrics and so on. I had some help for the first time also. And, and that was really nice. I mean, uh, the Ghost of Me and uh, Turn Up the Rage, I got some help with. And that was actually quite interesting to get that sort of input uh, from the outside and try to, 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 to put that into my own words, so to say. Uh, so, yeah. Mm hmm Awesome. Absolutely excellent. Well, <clears throat> you know, it, it would have been a, a different approach with all the unfortunate circumstances, but uh, you've pulled it off in, in the honour of, of, of Martin. So congratulations. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, all right. right. So for me, the one thing I want to ask is because, you know, listening, listening to this album and, you know, studying the albums that came before, it's to me. To me, it's obvious that you guys have pushed the bar for what thrash metal and that kind of genre is supposed to stand for. Um, it can normally be one-dimensional for a lot of bands, but for you guys, you pushed it and you made it more complex. You made it more interesting, more engaging. So, can you tell me the process? Like, like, was that a conscious effort by you guys to make something different, make something that stands out within metal and that genre specifically? Uh, yes. And and no, I mean, yeah, yes, we are. We want to do something different uh, than I mean. These days, I think that we got a lot. Of, we got a lot of good bands, 
and they they have a you know fantastic sound and they got the you know all the stuff you want you got the double pedals and you got all the guitar playing and and the of course some of the stuff that makes us stand apart <clears throat> not because i have to put myself into focus but but the thing is that we have a like clean vocal approach maybe makes a difference and um uh, but i think one of the things is that that um uh, we are music fans, and and and, and in a in a broad sense of that, you know, it, 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 so so we um, we like seventies prog rock stuff, and we like eighties, obviously, of course, metal and thrash metal and stuff like that. But I I think we also tend to listen to a lot of newer, interesting stuff that maybe isn't necessarily metal, but um, it's a two way street. I think one of the other way around, I mean, I mean, I always say this and I know maybe, but the thing is that I'm, I'm a huge Motorhead fan and I always been. And one of the things that I love about them is that they just went into the studio and then they were cranking out, you know, 10 or 12 tunes and then they're off to the road again. And then, you know, you know and let me always said that what you get is what you comes natural out of us naturally. And we're trying to stick to that as well and not trying to be, you know, not to worry too much about, well, nowadays, you know, blast beats is, is the thing or you need to do more high pitch scream vocals or whatever. Uh, we try not to do that. So to, to keep the process isolated a little bit. But uh, so it's a, it's a conscious and unconscious uh, process, if you can say so. <laughs> yeah. Nice. nice. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that I lo I was gonna that was one of the questions I was gonna ask you, you know, what kind of influences and stuff. And uh, Motorhead is a huge influence on my band as well. And uh, it's it's so awesome to hear that from a band that has inspired me so much as well, artillery, you know. Um, but uh yeah, I mean it's uh it's it's just really I love the, the organic element to your band, and you know, I've heard it's very much like a family unit and stuff, and I think you know, that's such a huge part of what makes you guys what you are. And obviously it's your, your vocals, your incredible uh, different approach within the genre. Like, I, like <clears throat> I could talk myself and Corbin chat about great vocalists all the time on the show here. And a hundred percent, you're the top of the list for me anyway. But, um, you know, uh, speaking of your incredible vocals, um, uh, you know, because I, I like to record quite a lot myself here. Uh, don't be modest. I mean, come on. <laughs> I, uh, I do, I do uh, uh, a bit of recording myself here at home. And um, I was just wondering, have you any studio rituals or anything that you need to have in the studio while you're recording? Uh, <clears throat> I, I try not to have rituals because, uh, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you know, because it, I don't know, sometimes it, that... Maybe that's a good thing, and sometimes it makes you focus on the ritual instead of what you need to do. But I think that I do have some rituals. I mean, one of the things is that uh, <clears throat> before I go in, I, I need to have a cup of coffee. I mean, I, I love coffee, and here we go. And I got one myself. I got my bender oh. cup. There, so, <laughs> hmm. Cheers and coffee, even though it's in the evening by you guys. So actually, it's allowed to have a, a pint there if you want. But the thing is, though. I, I um, well, I mean, that's it. I, I, I like to sit and chat a little bit with the, the producer, which has been Sir Anderson for the last, uh, I think, six records or something like that. Uh, two wow. without me and four with me. Uh, and so um, that's it. But I mean, I sometimes use pictures. Uh, if I need to get in a certain mood, I, I like to, to find pictures when also when I write the lyrics. So, so sometimes I bring that with me so I can look at it. Uh, that gives me a focus uh, visually and that helps me uh, because um, I think one of the things is when I'm in the studio I mean I, I have to sing for eight hours something like that so if I you know if I burn out in, in, a, in a you know in one hour or two hours uh, we have a, a problem also economically because <laughs> it will be very expensive just to have me sit moan in the in the corner you know <clears throat> so the thing is that I try to 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 view uh, look at my my voice as uh, uh, you know um, a separate thing from my body actually, uh, so I I always talk about my voice in a third person perspective <laughs> uh, <laughs> because uh, it helps me not to be too I mean if it doesn't do what I want to do uh, I I'm you know it helps me not going like <clears throat> like this and trying too hard. It makes me just, you know, maybe relax a bit more and then go in and, and try again. And, and yeah, so that helps. 
it sounds a bit crazy, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> yeah, but that helps. I like yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Carbs. Yep. Um. So you know the question is so you know this album came out last year, 2021. What kind of focus did you guys for this album compared to your last? Did you guys have any? you know, different focus on, all right, I want to make a specific sound. I want to make a specific vision come to life on this album. Did you guys have anything like that or just going in and making music? Um, I think that uh, the process around the Face of Fear, which which actually brought us around Australia, and we, we did a tour, uh, you know, in the Philippines and uh, Australia and New Zealand and finished off in, in actually in Russia. Um, and I think that that album was quite hard on us to do. Uh, that was a tough one to do. Uh, I, I can't say really, but there was just like, you know, a lot of uh, uh, challenges and it came out and it was hard to support just to simply because, uh, you know, COVID came just, you know, shortly afterwards. Uh, but I think that one of the things is that this album, of course, the X album was uh, the 10th album. 40th anniversary so I was I was thinking of uh, of things that I could maybe draw upon you know because the Stutzers you know Michael uh, and Morton had a lot of stuff lying around and they had a lot of old demos and material and stuff like that and I mean uh, we didn't use that much but we did use some bits and pieces here and there and one of the things is that they had two albums, oh, sorry, two uh, bands been prior to, to Artillery. One of them was called Devil Symphony and the other one was Silver Cross. And I figured those were great, you know, great titles, actually. Uh, and um, and I, 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 I thought about going maybe back, uh, thinking about how it was to be, an, you know, youngsters in the early 80s coming, uh, coming from this, the 70s uh, scene but dwelling into this new exciting t territory, which was an extreme metal, when it, all of a sudden Judas Priest got this focus, all of a sudden we had Overkill by Motorhead and we had, you know, British Steel and all that stuff and the, and the harder edge. And, uh, and the, the, then the, the first wave of thrash metal came. And I think that with that, there was, a, of course, obviously from Denmark, Merciful Fate and King Diamond. So there was this dabbling with the satanic ideas and the danger of that as well and so I just thought of that you know combining maybe this um, fascination with the 80s you know mythological stuff with also the the, the current uh, you know the world is a horrible place stuff <laughs> so so yeah. that was my 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 you know uh, mindset if you can say so yeah yeah, awesome. That's so cool. I love that. Um, that actually makes me think about um, my, my favorite track on the album. It's very hard to pick, but I, I'm thinking Beggars in Black Suits, um, lyrically especially, and uh, musically. I just I love that <clears throat> the Eastern, um, <clears throat> you know, the Egyptian uh, Eastern sound scales. Um, I've actually used that a lot in my music for over the years, simply from the inspiration from artillery. Um, but uh, in this song, obviously that that jumps out in, in a lot of sections. But the the lyrics of that song in particular, and just after what you just said, could you elaborate a bit more on the lyrics of that song in particular? Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah because it, it sounds like a you know uh, maybe a bit of weird weird title, but uh, I think that in in the wake of, of all these disasters that we have uh, on the planet. Uh, to me, I mean, I, I was uh, thinking about the, the once again my childhood, where we were having having all these charity shows when people would send in money and people would sing and hold hands and all that stuff, and uh, you know, and and it doesn't change, you know, it's still here. And I, I mean, we're doing this, and we all the time is like we're gathering more money, and uh, it doesn't seem to solve anything. It seems like uh, you know. So my my idea was that okay well we we the, if as as long as there's no political will, we are we're not really going to change anything because it's too precious you know it's too useful you know it's you know if you have a problem you know in our country let's just see if we can start a fight outside of the country then it moves people's focus you know we have to stand together because we are at war. Uh, and then the people would go to work and they would do what they, what they are being told and stuff like that. Uh, and it just pisses me off, man. I mean, it's just, it's just 
this is a hoax. You know, all these people who are suffering in third world countries, they're suffering not because we, we actually are interested in doing something. I mean, those in charge. I mean, I'm, I know I'm painting the picture black here, but the thing is, they're not going to get help because it's too precious to have them being in pain because every time we need people to, you know, wake up or bring, uh, you know, some money from their coffers, we just uh, show them pictures uh, online and in the news and, and so on. And then we can have a charity show and everybody's feeling better about themselves. And then and, and those in charge of that is that these, these black suit guys. In the in maybe in behind the scenes or something like that, and they tell us, well, we are taking care of the money and we're bringing them and see how it works out, and <clears throat> not not helping them solving their own problems, but just saying, hey, here you have <clears throat> maybe a, a diet coke and a and a and a freeze pizza you can warm up, you know. But what are you going to do tomorrow, you know? As long as you're not able to, you know, you, you cannot, uh, you know, help yourself out because your your situation is is hopeless. And so I think this uh, human misery as a, as a, you know, this sort of, uh, you know, uh, machinery, which makes people feel better about themselves is a, is a disgusting. <laughs> so that's, uh, that was my approach. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, well, I mean, I totally agree with, with everything that you've just said. Um, but yeah, I, that's what I, that's what I got from the song. You know, that's the thing I love about your lyrics as well. The very, uh, they they have a lovely air to them in a, a, a what would you say like an artistic kind of approach. It's funny that you speak you talk about you look at artwork and pictures and images. Um, it it's just it really comes across in the lyrics because you it's ab, you're writing abstract, but yet you're writing clear concise messages at the same time. It's very cool. Like it's a very cool kind of overlap of of styles. I really like it. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for letting us know about that. <laughs> Well, thank um, you very much for the kind words, you know. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so actually leading from his question, that's your perfect segue for mine, is the, um, one of the songs that really interests me was the eighth track on the album, Vagai Vium. I don't, I'm probably saying that wrong. Vagai Vium. But the, the thing that, that stood out to me was the outro, the last 30 seconds or whatnot. It had that real doom feel to it. There were those chords, though, and it really blew my mind. I was sitting there like, what is this? Like, it just... It gave me chills and I was like, this is badass. Um, tell me, what was the, because the rest of the song doesn't have those elements. It's the last like 30 seconds where you hear that. Um, what was the reason for it? Well, <clears throat> uh, first of all, uh, the title, Vag i Viom, is an uh, Old Norse expression, which means actually a, a wolf in the holiest of holy, uh, in either in the temple or something like that. Uh, obviously, of course, it's it's not it's not to be taken uh, as uh, you know as there is a physical wolf in the temple. It means the desecration of something that shouldn't be. You know, it's it's the evil that creeps in either in your mind, in your heart, in your life. Uh, some people say that my, <laughs> it's funny because some people <clears throat> are really hating the lyrics for this one because I say that it, it it's it's wolf man, you know, knocking at your door. And people say, well, this is about the fucking Wolfman. It's a horrible movie from the Universal Monster Collection from the 40s, what he's talking about. And the thing is, it has nothing to do with that. It's something to do with, with yeah. evil creeping in uh, and gets to your mind, it gets to your heart. And uh, so, so the Vikings were using that expression, if, if you would lose your mind to evil, you know, it's a Vardikin Vium. You know, that was something they, they would say. Uh, and some people might say, they, I'm wrong about that, and then write me. Uh, but uh, or correct me uh, but the outro was I think some of our, that idea stuck that you know the evil would keep on creeping and so the outro would have this sort of doomy this is like you know, the final it's the end it's going towards its doom in the darkness so so that's uh, I think um, was was a part of the idea yeah uh, yeah again I love that like it was so unexpected too because you know I love the album the whole album and then get to that point and I just hear those that that's 30 seconds i'm like oh shit this is this is some some spiraling dark like <laughs> outro and um, i always love a good intro and outro i, I love when a song um when, a, when when they choose to do a song and really make the start and or finish that much more exciting and you guys did that in spades on that one so it really stood up to me awesome Thanks. yeah <laughs> it's, it's an incredible track yeah it's funny myself and corbin often 
we listen to an album during a week separately and then you know we come and discuss it and a lot of the times we pick out a lot of the same things in our notes and stuff and that was something I was going to mention too like this like stabbing note at the end this octave it keeps going down in octaves it was it just came out of nowhere it's very cool uh production side elements but uh that as well that tune at the start has that middle eastern scale riff stuff that i absolutely love so uh it's brilliant it's brilliant um you know i spoke about my favorite song on the album uh have you a favorite song on the album by any chance <laughs> um, <laughs> <a> hard thing. <laughs> yes it's hard um who's your favorite but... child <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, I think I have to, to, I mean, well, I, I, I actually really like The Ghost of Me, and it's not because of, it's the, the ballad, but uh, it's, it's one of the songs that I got some help with, uh, and, uh, and at the same time also, it's, um, I mean, I'm always a little bit of, afraid of, of whether or not we should have a, a, you know, a ballad track on the album, uh, and every time I'm very nervous whether or not it will turn out cheesy or horrible. And of course, we will cut it if, if it does that. But it, uh, to me, it was just um, also because um, the, 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 the vocal lines uh, in, that, uh, in that song actually changed quite dramatically. Because uh, in, the, in the beginning, I was just singing it very plainly. Uh, and it started uh, out like that, and and we could tell it didn't work. And I was like, okay, well maybe we should have to 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 you know cut the track. And then I said, oh, well let me have another try. And then I tried to to make it like um, trying to to make this uh, sort of like a different rhythm to 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 the lyrics, and that sort of like made it work, I think. And so that's just simply one of the things. And I like the you know the the, the, the choirs we were doing during the chorus and stuff like that. So, but I mean. So it's, it's it's tough because uh, I'm looking at the track list right now, and, and uh, <laughs> I think that um, yeah, I mean I I I like Morse Anthologica as well, uh, but that was also just simply because uh, it's um, I, I like the you know the horror of the title really because it, it's the death of the spirit, and I think that's uh, just uh, you know that I I think that's something that we all fear. <clears throat> because when we, we are into music, we're into movies and, and, and books and all that stuff. Uh, and we know if we are listening to a horrible album, or we watching a terrible movie or reading a boring book, it takes away our fascination with it. And actually, some sometimes it scares me because I know that I, I might get dis disillusioned. And um, because the magic is in between the notes and it's in between the words and, and all that stuff. And that's what makes it magical. And that's uh, sometimes, uh, you know, when it's there and it's, you know, makes you want to watch all the movies and listen to all records. But if you encounter something that is against that, you know, it makes you disillusioned. So, so to me, that, it, that's what this song reminds me of. And uh, yeah, very so cool. That, uh, yeah. Cool concept. I'm so glad to hear you say Ghost to Me because, you know, it is the, the track in the album that stands out for being a little bit different. Obviously, it's the ballad element. <clears throat> but when I listen to this, that track in particular, it has this sound of a classic song, but also, you know, it's going to be a future classic song. You know, it's got that kind of that lovely vibe to it, you know, um, where you know that there's some real depth in, and real passion behind this song. And I think your vocals really shine through on this track as well. It's um, it's just a, a lovely track. Uh, I think it's all really based, or, it's built around your vocals. Uh, it's the, what it so sounds like, you know, so very, very cool. Um, but uh, yeah, the, I love the song. <laughs> so I'm glad you chose that one. <laughs> you. <Norms. laughs> um, you know, I do have a different question, but to piggyback off the talk of that song, it kind of reminded me, as far as the ballad goes, it kind of reminds me of, a, of the kind of ballad you'd hear on, like, Black Label Society. It was like, well, like, it was a very manly, very tough, like, very, very badass ballad. It wasn't like one of those glam or hair metal, you know, kind of ballads. It was like a badass one. So I don't think, I don't think you had any worry about, you shouldn't have any, you shouldn't have had, had any worry about that track. It came off amazing and it came off badass. So Good job um, by all three of us. <laughs> um, so the question I want to ask is, and this is this is a question I've been thinking since I was studying this album. Um, 
the more the more years you make music you guys make music the more albums you make are you guys at all ever concerned about the lack of attention span by by fans today you know 10 track album four minute track songs like like is that ever in your head like oh shit we should try cut it down or, or is this too long is this too lengthy do you guys ever have that worry um no i think uh, I, I mean, I know that uh, it is a problem with the intent, attention span, and that's the way the world is, apparently. And uh, luckily, I think we see a rise in especially young music fans nowadays who are buying vinyl records, and they are going back home and sit down with their friends, and they spend all day listening to Pink Floyd, you know. So there's a, you know, there's a, a part of society who's, who's, you know, taking a stand, if whatever you want to call it, to get against these things. But I think that... Uh, we try not to think about it because we can't really change it. And I think that uh, we're, tr- you know, we're just thinking about what what is it that we want to do and uh, what is the kind of record that you want to have. And I always think about the. Um, I think that Angus Young once said that uh, you got to have that album track that you won't play live because it makes the, uh, the the album interesting. You know, you put that song on because you know this is a like a hidden gem. And you don't do it really for 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 popularity or publicity or the the money because it won't sell as a single. You do it just simply because you you are fascinated by doing something that's a bit different. Uh, and um, I like that. And I know that this album format is is uh, archaic. Uh, you know, like it's it's uh, you know it's 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 not really you know hot hip or working or paying off. But I like to 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 stay in that sort of a bubble. But but it it also also makes me think of I mean, back in the days when I was, you know, my mates will hang you know, come to my 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 room after school or after you know, work, and we would drink and have a few beers before we had to take a bath and then off to the city and, and look at chick at chicks, you know. The thing is that we are. Uh, we would sit in my room primarily because I was living very close to a bus stop, right? So it was like, oh, everybody came in with a six pack and then we would get, you know, hammered. Um, um, and then uh, people were saying, you know, we were some night we were listening to Alice Cooper. And then I said, okay, we were listening to Brutal Planet. And one of the, my guys was like, ah, I really like this album. And then I would put on the Welcome to My Nightmare. And he was like, that's, that's terrible. I really hate that. And so on. And to say, well, the thing is, I think that sometimes you need to 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 take an album and then chop off everything else you might have of references and ideas about production and all that, and just look into what is this and then enjoy it for what it is. Because otherwise, you know, you chop yourself off for a lot of great experiences. Uh, I think that's um, one of the keys actually to 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 stay fascinated also with older stuff and 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 put out some value from it, because. I know that some record companies say that when they're getting the mix from a record, they don't say, I, I don't like the sound of this or that, or this. it just needs to be higher. If it's not high enough, we need more bass and we need more volume. That's it, because that's what how people perceive music. If it's, if it's loud, it's potent, then it's good, yeah. <laughs> sadly. Yeah, um, it just reminds me like, cause you know, I was, I've been re-watching lately the um, Bohemian Rhapsody movie. And then, like, you know, the scene where the guy's complaining about the, the song, Bohemian Rhapsody, saying that's too long, no one will enjoy it. And then you get to the end of the movie and he's like, he's beside himself because <laughs> yeah. the, that song has exploded. It's mega famous and he turned that. In. It's just so it's really interesting how, like, yeah, it, sh- it should be up to the band to make what they want to make without any worries. And, um, yeah, so no, it's, um, it's a credit to you for not caving in, for not, you know, going mainstream i guess and just doing what you want so yeah credit to you i love that that that's uh, again that's another thing we speak talk about quite a lot on the show too is that you know the importance of writing a song for yourself and your band and your team and your crew like um it, but i really think when the bands do that it comes across on the record or on the live show and it just there's just a different, and that's where you get that real connection with with the band, you know, and um, you, they become lifelong fans, <laughs> you know. I think it's it's a beautiful, beautiful side of music. Um, but th- speaking about you, you know, your your younger days and hanging out and listening to albums and stuff, just just made me think about something off topic from the album that I'd just be curious about. Um, when you got the call to join Artillery, 
what how were you feeling was that was it incredible were you super excited or what did you do to celebrate <laughs> just out of curiosity um yeah i mean um it, it was it, my way into artillery is a bit strange because i actually i actually did a, a few albums with another band before that it was called ripe and it was like more you know melodic heavy metal stuff and um, and getting gigs was always something that you were chasing, and so I had a few friends who said, "Why why don't we just make a King Diamond tribute band?" Because in those days, uh, King Diamond was ill and he wasn't really touring, so we said, "Well, okay, we, let's try and, and, and do a few gigs with that." And so I I got this guy to paint me in the face, and I got all this stuff, and we even you know got. <laughs> Yeah, we, we even got a dead guy, you know, like they, we had the, the bones from, from, you know, a medical study, you know, in this case. So we had this real guy we were, you know, traveling with and uh, with the state setting and everything. So, so the femur and all that stuff was the real deal. Um, and the, and all of a sudden that made, a, made us, or we went to, to Athens and we went to, of course, several places in Germany and it all of a sudden, you know, grew. And we were doing this gig uh, in a small town and the artillery were there. And their previous singer, uh, Son Adams, and he, he's decided to leave. Uh, and, and they heard me and I couldn't really tell why that would make them think of me being a lead singer for their band, because obviously I, I was trying to impersonate King Diamond. But... Um, I got the call from Michael Stutzer and uh, and I said, obviously, of course, said yes. But I was at, at first I was thinking, artillery, what's that? I mean, I, I artillery has always been, you know, more known outside of the, the borders of Denmark than in Denmark. But I got this uh, tape, which I had recorded from the radio from uh, 1989, I think, which was a demo, demo of Don't Believe. And I heard that. I said, oh, my God, that's the band. And uh, so it made me, you know, rush back uh, 20 years into my, my 10 year self sitting in my room listening to, to artillery. So that was kind of weird. But uh, I, I was like, um, at first, I didn't really, you know, know what, how to react because I didn't understood the scope of it. I just said yes. And then all of a sudden it blew my mind because two first gigs was like tryout gigs small towns and the third gig was on the board you know on the barge to hell uh, uh, you know uh, on the boat towards the Nassau Islands standing and looking at the you know at the sea uh, and I was like I am I'm a country boy I mean from the, I'm the southern part of Funen in Denmark I've never been you know that far away before so it was like this is the third gig you know unfathomable for me at the time yeah so uh, that's unreal it's incredible you know because for me, since you joined the band, the band has just come on like so much sonically. You know, it's uh, you couldn't ask for any better of a frontman singer uh, to have been introduced to the band. Um, you know, the, the the previous albums were absolutely incredible, but I really think things have really stepped up. So to hear that story, it's so it's so incredible. It's just it's nice, real real nice story, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um. So, so the question I want to ask is, um, where did the album cover come from? The artwork. What was that about? Um, where did that? Yeah. So, how did that happen? Uh, uh, this one. Yep. Um, well, um, <laughs> uh, we we had been working with a guy uh, on the face of fear, called in Martin Hilkling. Hilkling, sorry, Hilkling, Martin Hilkling, and he the uh, I I. Um, I liked his stuff that he was doing uh, because it's, it's, it's a bit retro, but still also a little bit modern. Uh, uh, the idea was, was one that he came up with uh, because Michael Stutzer very much wanted the, the album to be called X, obviously, of course. Uh, and uh, I, I mean, I didn't object to that at all. It made perfectly sense. So, uh, and uh, I was a bit, you know, at, at first, a bit afraid that it would look like, you know, uh, uh, you know, like a pirate flag. <laughs> so, but uh, I, as some people say, it more look makes them, makes them think of of, uh, of like a treasure map that it marks the spot. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, obviously, <laughs> of course, the, the Rim Reaper have to be on there. Uh, so, but I like exciting artworks, and I, I mean. 
I, I like a good artwork. Uh, I mean, I, I know that Atelier has been, you know, uh, infamous for having the worst cover of, of all time in the on Terror Squad. So that sort of a, it haunts us a bit. At, at least it haunts me. Uh, I always think of, oh, uh, let's let's hope that uh, that we'll not do that again. <laughs> so, yeah. I really like the artwork. I think it's brilliant. Um, like. You know, the, the whole concept of 10 being, you know, uh, the 10th album and the X and all that, I love it. And you can't go wrong with the Grim Reaper anyway. You throw him in there and it's super cool anyway, <laughs> you know. So, uh, um, you know, artwork is, is, a, is, a, is a really important thing. But any other, you know, um, pieces of wisdom that you might be able to throw out to up-and-coming artists, um, any, any kind of... Wisdom words. <laughs> um, yes, I mean, if you are starting out as a band, um, there, I think, two things. One is uh, persistence is the key. You know, keep on going because that's the only thing that uh, that will make the difference in the long run. If you look at all the old bands, they stuck with what they were doing. And uh, that's what made them what they are today, I suppose, of course, the material as well and all that stuff. But staying and sticking with it is, is an important thing uh, because, you know, to be recognizable, to like, make, you know, if you carve out a little bit of people's, you know, memory and you are in part of that, and then every time they hear you, they think of you, that that's, uh, it's, it's a valuable thing for you to, to, to make it in music. And the other thing is, uh, especially today, you know, music is perhaps 10 or 15 percent of being in a band. The other, you know, 85 percent is logistics, economics, uh, and, 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 you know, writing and, and working together, rehearsals, which is sometimes a big problem, you know. Oh, I can't go today, mate. My my leg is, you know, really tired, and uh, I feel like crap, and we can't play. No, but the thing is, that's a, that's the thing, and, and obviously, of course, there has to be room in a band, especially if it's an old band. The people got, you know, separate lives and lives outside of the band as well. We got kids and wives, and perhaps also ex-wives, and uh, all that stuff. You need to 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 work out, and uh, there has to be room for that, and there has to be an understanding for that. And, it, and we need to, to understand that we, we can't be you know, tough guys all the time. We need to have sensitive moments and we have to be there and support each other uh, and then have a focus on the gig as well. So all these things uh, have to work together. So it's, I always said it's like having four other girlfriends who's whining, complaining and being sensitive and all that, including myself, of course. And then we just have to accept that and then uh, make it work and talk about it. You know, it's typical of men, especially that we don't talk. We're just being tough guys and then hate each other. And then we're getting hammered. And then uh, luckily, maybe we will work it out. And otherwise, we'll just stop being friends and we will leave the band and the other guys are assholes. Because that's the, that's the way it works. And we have to, to keep that in mind, I think. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the best piece of, and no mess, and that's the best piece of advice you could give to young bands. You know, because it is like a relationship, right? It's so awesome to hear a band on your level <laughs> saying the same things that we all go through as well. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, good stuff, Corbs. <laughs> um, look, so I don't have any more questions today except for one, and that is, as I said to you yesterday, today, um, because you are our guest, you get to choose the album we talk about next week. So yeah. if you have one in mind, we would like to hear it. What are we going to cover next week on sites? Um, I'm, I, I must admit, I haven't really, I know I haven't done my research probably. So I don't know if you guys have already covered this album, but I would love to hear something about, because I'm a huge Devin Townsend fan. So I would love to hear something about an empath because I, I think that's a, a very interesting album. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so I would love to hear something about that. Yeah, yeah we definitely have them. Nice. <laughs> Nice pick, man. Yeah, Devin is, is definitely somebody we would have liked to have featured, but not yet. So good choice. <laughs> cool. <Nice. laughs> um, all right. So do you have any any last words or anyone you want to shout out or give word to before we end this? Yeah, I mean, 
uh, one of the things I would like to say is, of course, that, that we were, we were, you know, when we were touring in Australia, uh, we were having such a good time. You know, uh, we were, you know, people were so nice to us and we were, you know, everybody, you know, it makes us really, made us really feel at home. And it, it wasn't a, one of the things that I also was thinking about, you know, is that it was so, um, you know, it was like going home, actually. It's, the mentality was very much something that we would connect with and we would love to go back. And I uh, just say also that uh, thank you very much for having me and, and uh, having the interest in what we're doing because that's what we, you know, you know, we are very much, you know, in need of that. So, so thank you very much for that. And um, yeah, and yeah, let's just uh, keep on doing what we're doing and then uh, have a good time. So thank you all very much for that, you know. That's perfect. Uh, Ren, any last words? Uh, again, just thank you so much, brother. It was an absolute honor to speak to you. And uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I can't wait to see what comes up next for artillery. Super excited. <laughs> Yeah, me right. neither. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's see what happens. There will be a live album out now here in December, I hope. Uh, oh, so, uh, so nice. yeah, next well, step is a live excellent. album. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, again, okay. thank you so much for your time. We will be posting this next week. And uh, once it's out, I'll definitely send it to you. You can share it on your platform. Which we'll share it on ours. And um, we'll definitely be in touch. Absolutely. And I will All right. Have a good yeah. night. Yep. You too. Thanks, brother. Bye.